Remember that? Remember that? Riding out in his wheelchair, just spin him right in ecstasy. Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vihari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Janna Vallabha Giri Vardhari Jashoda Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vyadi Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Vyadi Gopi Janna Bhalla Bhagiri Vardhari Gopi Janna Bhalla Bhagiri Vardhari Yasura Nandana Brajjana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Jasura Nandana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jayo Radha Madhava Kunja Biyari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Biyari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Sisi Radha Madhava Ki Sisi Radha Giridhari Ki Jayo Mishnupad Paramahamsa Vari Vraja Kajaja Shudra Shishi Mahad Is the Vain Gaisa Vai Jara Nara Vinda Bhakti Varanta Sami Shila Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Parvara Mahamsa Parivraja Ka Jai Jai Shudra Shri Shri Maad Divine Grace Shila Bhakti Siddhanta Sharashwati Gosam Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Nantakoti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Grantara Shimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai Sama Veda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai Go Bremanandi All Glory to Assemble the Vortis All Glory to Assemble the Vortis All Glory to Assemble the Vortis all glories, all glories, Sri Sri Guru and Sri Gauranga. So this morning reading from the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter 11, the transcendental qualities of Ritra Sura, um, text 22. <clears> oh, 
ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതി വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതി വാസുദേവായ ഓം നമോ ഭഗവതി വാസുദേവായ പുംസം കിലായ്ക്കാന്ത ദിയം സ്വകാനം സമ്പദോ ദിവി ഭൂമൌ വസായം നാതി യദ് ദ്വേഷ ഉദ്വേഗ ആധിർ മദ കലിയർ വ്യാസനം സംപ്രയാസ ഭൂംസം കിക്കായ ഭൂംസം കിലായ കാന്തദയം സ്വകാനം കിയാലം സ്വകാനം യസംപദോ ദിവി ഭൂമൗരസായം നാതിയാദ്വേഷ ഉദ്വേഗ ആധിർ മദാകലിർവ്യാസനം സംപ്രയാസ ഭൂസം കിലാകാന്തദിയം സ്വകാനം യസംപദോ ദ്വീവി ദിവി ഭൂമൗരസായം നാതിയാദ്വേഷ ഉദ്വേഗ ആധിർ മദാകലിർവ്യാസനം സംപ്രയാസ ഭൂംസം കിലായ കാന്തദിയം സ്വകാനം യസംപദോ ദിവി ഭൂമൗരസായം നയാതിയാദ്വേഷോദ്വേഗ ആദർ മദാകലിർവ്യാസനം സംപ്രയാസ ഭൂമൗരസായം 
yasambodo divi bumaura sayam. Online. Okay, word for word. Pumsam, unto persons. Kila, certainly. Ekantadiyam, who are advanced in spiritual consciousness. Swakanam, who are recognized by the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his own. Yaha, yeah. which, sampada, opulences, divi, in the upper planetary systems, bhumau, in the middle planetary systems, vasayam, and in the lower planetary systems, na, not, rati, bestows, yet, from which, dveshaha, envy, udvega, anxiety, Adihi, mental agitation, Mada, pride, Kalihi, quarrel, Vyasanam, distress due to loss, Samprayasaha, great endeavor. Translation, persons who are fully, who fully surrender at the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead and always think of his lotus feet, are accepted and recognized by the Lord as his own personal assistants or servants. The Lord never bestows upon such servants the brilliant opulences of the upper, lower, and middle planetary systems of this material world. When one possesses material opulence in any of these three divisions of the universe, his possessions naturally increase his enmity, anxiety, mental agitation, pride and belligerence. Thus one goes through, such, the goes through much endeavor to increase and maintain his possessions and he suffers great unhappiness when he loses them. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. In Bhagavad Gita 4th chapter 11th verse, the Lord says, Quote, as devotees surrender unto me, I reward them accordingly. Everyone follows my path in all respects. O son of Prita, unquote. Both Indra and Vritrasur were certainly devotees of the Lord, although Indra took instructions from Vishnu to kill Vritrasura. The Lord was actually more favorable to Vritrasura because after being killed by Indra's thunderbolt, Vritrasura would go back to Godhead, whereas the victorious Indra would rot in this material world. Because both of them were devotees, the Lord awarded them the respective benedictions they wanted. Mitrasura never wanted material possessions, for he knew very well the nature of such possessions. To accumulate material possessions, one must labor very hard, and when he gets them, he creates many enemies because this material world is always full of rivalry. If one becomes rich, his friends or relatives are envious. For a kanta bhaktas, unalloyed devotees, Krishna therefore never provides material possessions. A devotee sometimes needs some material possessions for preaching, but the possessions of a preacher are not like those of a karmi. A karmi's possessions are achieved as a result of karma, but those of a devotee are arranged by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, just to facilitate his devotional activities. Because a devotee never uses material possessions for any purpose other than the service of the Lord, the possessions of a devotee are not to be compared to those of a karmi. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Dvaita Gadadhar Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakti Brinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Banchaka Patru Bhashcha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha Patidhanam Bhavani Bhu Vaishnavi Bhu Namo Namaha So by your good wishes, hopes, and prayers, I'll say a, try to say a few things. 
One who fully, uh, one who fully, persons who fully surrender the lotus feet of the supreme personality of God and always think of his lotus feet are accepted and recognized by the Lord at his own personal assistance or servants. The Lord never bestows upon such servants the brilliant opulences of the upper, lower, and middle planetary systems of this material world. So that's one point. Now the point, when one possesses material opulence in any of these three divisions of the universe, his possessions naturally increase his enmity, anxiety, mental agitation, pride, and belligerence. Thus one goes through much endeavor to increase and maintain his possessions, and he suffers great unhappiness when he loses them. Odd to be said. I'll start with this. My wife bought a magnet. You know, these magnets you like put on refrigerators or different things like this in Hillcrest. And it's a picture of a young woman looking kind of distressed out, you know, like this, like that. And it says, uh, may increase weight, depression, anxiety, and loss of sex desire. Ask your doctor if marriage is right for you. <laughs> right? So, you know, material world should have, has a label on it. It's right here. You know, every, everything has a label on it. Like, you know, may cause, like medicine, like that, you know, may cause. It's like these commercials, like these commercials on TV or on the radio, and they talk about, you know, uh, Mom Bart was bringing this up. There's someone of, like, for anxiety, and then, and then they rattle off, you know, all the side effects. And he was telling me there's this one for anxiety, and one of the side effects is anxiety. Yeah. So the point is, uh, you know, buyer beware, there's a label. So right here is a label, right in this verse, it says, uh, one who possesses these opulences, any of them, uh, these opulences will naturally increase one's enmity, anxiety, mental agitation, pride, and belligerence. And you'll have to endeavor very hard to maintain your possessions, and you'll suffer great unhappiness when you lose them. Quite interesting, because uh, we're all thinking, uh, everyone's thinking just the opposite, that if I have more material opulences, I'll become free from all of these things. So uh, this is why Krishna does not... Uh, Award these, that's what in the beginning of the verse is making the point, is those who are very dear to the Lord, he does not award these things to them. Uh, because he doesn't want his devotees to suffer. Just like a parent, young children, or maybe not so young children, I'll put it uh, this way, um, uh, foolish children, whatever the age may be, sometimes a foolish child is older. Right? They say people will get older, but they don't necessarily grow up, right? Uh, the child may want so many different things, but the parents say, no, 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 you shouldn't take it, you know? And the child's sure that if they had that, they'd be very happy, right? And sometimes they have a tantrum. You know what a tantrum is? You know what that word tantrum? You just have a tantrum. You flip out, screaming, yelling, kicking, like that. Even Prabhupada. Right? You want his father to buy him one gun? You know, a gun, Prabhupada, a gun. And then he wanted two. You know, you know, I want two guns. I said, why? He said, two hands, two guns. And I said, Prabhupada, I want that gun. So Prabhupada, Prabhupada's father would um, spoil him, give him all kinds of things. Okay, remember that, tantrum verse from Krishna. So, uh, you know, but the parent knows better. Parent knows better. So fortunately, Krishna's there. Suridam Sarabhutanam, he's in everyone's heart. And um, as far as possible, he's trying to help us in our Krishna consciousness, and that's why he won't give us these things. Now, in the verse, Prabhupada quotes the verse, Yeyatama Prabhajante, which means everyone, uh, Krishna's reciprocating with every single living entity, every single living entity according to their position in relationship to him, because he's the absolute truth. Everything is in relationship to Krishna. Even one who is a, a complete atheist or in such low modes of nature. I mean, how Krishna conscious do you think a slug is? A worm or a slug, right? Of course, some people argue, how do you know they're not? You ever meet people like that? So, you know, if I was, you know, dogs and cats, they can't take advantage of the Vedic literatures or Krishna consciousness. And people go, how do you know? Maybe they can. 
I don't think so. Yeah, yeah. It's just Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. They don't. I mean, it's just, you know, they don't. So the point is, uh, even com- complete absence of Krishna consciousness is in relationship to Krishna. It's absence of Krishna consciousness. So um, and Krishna's in the heart of all living entities, and he's taking care of them, and he's reciprocating. So here, two kinds of devotees are, are mentioned. In this pastime, it comes out. You have Lord Indra, who uh, saw Kama, he has so many desires, so many material desires, but he's a devotee, and Krishna's taking care of him. And he really wants something, so Krishna's going to give it to him. He's going to give it to him. And, he, and then you have Vritrasura, who seems, wow, this is, this is the demon, but he's actually a great devotee who happened to be in that body. And he doesn't want anything to do with this material whatsoever, so he's getting uh, a ticket back home, back to Godhead after the battlefield. And Indra is so-called, Indra's winning, right? Indra wins the war. But what does he get for his endeavors? Prabhupada says, he uses a three-letter word here, beginning with R, rot. <laughs> he says, he, whereas the victorious Indra would rot in this material world, he gets to stay here, because that's what he wants. So he says, okay, I'll give it to you. But those who are very, very dear to the Lord, uh, Krishna doesn't give such things. He just won't give it to them. He's very, very kind. And uh, this comes out in uh, a few different pastimes. And of course, it's right here. That's the whole purpose of this pastime being related. Uh, the difference between Lord Indra and Vritrasura. Uh, the first one, I just wanted to, uh, just a few vo- verses that come up. Uh, first one is uh, Sudam Brahman. You know what day Sudam Brahman visited Dwarka? It was just the last week, I think. Yeah, yeah. Akshaya Tritiya. It was just the last week or so. That was the day he went to visit Dwarka. And there's just a few verses here I wanted to read about his, his realization of the same point that was brought up in today's verse. So this first verse is uh, oft quoted. Such a beautiful verse if you just think about it. But this is Sudam's uh, realization because what happened is he went to visit Dwarka and uh, his wife asked him, his wife sent him, said, I need you to go to Dwarka. We're really suffering here. Your friend Krishna, he's like, not only the king of Dorka, but he's the supreme personality of Godhead. And you went to school with him, you're good friends, maybe you're a Brahmin, he's a king. It wasn't uh, out of line to ask for some charity. That's what kings did. Brahmins would come, and if they didn't need, they would ask in charity. Even Jarasandha, big, big demon, he was famous for that. Even Karna, every day at noon. Why at noon? because he was the son of, the, of Surya. But every day at noon, he was just like, whatever you wanted, he'd be there, you get charity. So he went there, he didn't ask for anything. And then Krishna asked him, did you bring me anything? So he had a little bit of that chip rice like that, and Krishna started eating as, oh, this is so good. And Rukmini said, stop, stop, stop. Even that little bit of rice is sufficient to you know, satisfy the whole universe. So, you know, he had a real night, good night's sleep, and he left the next morning, and he, and he, but he didn't ask anything. But anyways, this is uh, uh, the famous verse here. Kwa ham duridra papiyan, kwa krishna. It's a good verse, excuse me. Says here, uh, uh, such a nice verse. I'm a sentimentalist. What can I tell you? Kwa ham dri dra papiyam kwa Krishna shindiketana Brahma banduri tismaham bahu bham parima bita. Says, who am I? Uh, a sinful, poor friend of a Brahmin. And who is Krishna? The Supreme Personality of Godhead, full of six opulences. Nevertheless, he has embraced me with his arms. He treated me just as one of his brothers, making me sit on the bed of his beloved consort. And because I was fatigued, his queen personally fanned me with a yak-tailed chamra. So here's his realization here. 
He says, thinking, so he realized that Krishna didn't give me anything. I didn't ask for anything. He says, uh, thinking, if this poor wretch suddenly becomes rich, he will forget me in his intoxicating happiness. The compassionate Lord did not grant me even a little wealth. Didn't send him home with anything. Like that. And then uh, 37, we'll jump ahead. Here it is. Okay. To a devotee who lacks spiritual insight, the Supreme Lord will not grant the wonderful opulences of this world, kingly power and material assets. Indeed, in his infinite wisdom, the unborn Lord well knows how the intoxication of pride can cause the downfall of the wealthy. So these are different verses in this chapter about Sudam Brahman. So, uh, so what happened? But he, he arrives, and there was he had greater opulence than the king of, the king of heaven. And uh, I, there's one verse there, Sanskrit word in Vishnachakavati Thakur, because Sudam Brahman is saying he didn't even give me a little, and he was making that point that <laughs> that little means that actually Krishna gave him everything. He, he was qualified, that's the point. He, Prabhupada says here in the, in the purport about a, a devotee's possessions and a karmi's possessions are two different things. It says a devotee's possessions are arranged by the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He's taking personal. So he's also arranging to take everything away. Was that Prabhupada's father used to always tell him? About ten arms? No, it's about Krishna. That's true. He said, uh, Krishna can take everything away. He has ten arms. He can take everything away, but he also gives with ten arms. Like that. So Krishna can just take everything away if he thinks that's best, and he can also give. It's like Srila Prabhupada's the, the prime example, how much opulence uh, Krishna gave Prabhupada to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. It just kept coming and coming and coming. Like that, because the devotee knows how to use it. But if a devotee doesn't know how to use his material possessions, or if they're an impediment, then Krishna may very kindly take them away. Prabhupada used that in his own life as far as his business falling apart, and his family falling, all of that, just, he said, Krishna just kind of took it away. Like that. And uh, at the time, you don't see it as a blessing, but afterwards, you think, wow, this is a blessing. You know, it's a blessing. And also, Prahlad Maharaj... There's a few, two, two, three verses here as another great example of, uh, of this. Uh, okay. It's 55, the end of this chapter. Narada Muni said, Pallad Maharaj was the best person in the family of, of suras who were always aspire for material happiness. Nevertheless, although allured by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, how did the Supreme Personality of Godhead allure Pallad? All the prayer, wonderful prayers that he offered, and uh, Nishingadev was Komala, he was pacified, and he offered Pat Prasad whatever he wanted, uh, Pallad whatever he wanted, planet, you, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Take sure. it. It says, uh, allured by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who offered him all benedictions for material happiness, because of his unalloyed Krishna consciousness, he did not want to take any material benefit for sense gratification. And it continues right in the beginning of the next chapter. Prahlad is speaking. He says, Prahlad Maharaj said, My dear Lord, O Supreme Personality of Godhead, because I was born in an atheistic family. Anyone here born in an atheistic family? Yep. Congratulations. Hmm? Me too. Okay. Uh... Because I was born in an atheistic family, I, w I am naturally attached to material enjoyment. Anyone born in a family where you were naturally attached to material enjoyment? <laughs> Therefore, kindly do not tempt me with these illusions. I am very much afraid of material conditions, and I desire to be liberated from materialistic life. It is for this reason I have taken shelter at your lotus feet. And then just two more verses, six and seven. O oh, my Lord, I am your unmotivated servant. It's an interesting word to use, unmotivated. Yeah. I don't want to know. <laughs> uh, 
unmotivated for you know material enjoyment. Okay, we got a lot of devotees who are unmotivated. That's what temple temple presidents and temple commanders are trying to like sankirtan leaders get you going. Uh, and you are my eternal master. There's no need of our being anything other than master and servant. You are naturally my master, and I'm naturally your servant. We have no other relationship. And then the last one here. Seven. This is the famous one. Oh, my Lord, best of the givers of benediction. If you at all want to bestow a desirable benediction upon me, then I pray from your Lordship that within the core of my heart there'll be no material desires. So he was asking for this benediction. And he was saying, Vanik is, it means merchant. He said, what, do you think I'm a merchant? You know, I'm doing this just for uh, business. You, uh, uh, you know, I give you something, you give me something. That's business, right? I give you something, you give me something. So I'll give you this devotional service, and in return, I want. Right? I want. So... Uh, Nadanam Najanam Nasundinam Kavitam Va Jagadishakame Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari Babatad Bhakta Hoitaki Twai. Bhakta saw, you know what that verse means? Yes or no? You went like this. What does it mean? You can paraphrase it. Nadanam Najanam Nasundinam Kavitam Va Jagadishakame Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari Babatad Bhakta Hoitaki Twai. It means, um, I want to attain on Lord devotional service. That's a good start, but there's a lot more to the verse than that. No, that's okay if you don't know. It's one of the Shikshastakam verses. Do you, do you know that verse? What's a translation of that, kind of, in your own words? It's, I, I do not want to have any wealth, any followers, or any um, woman, any okay. engagement with women. And? What do you want? Liberation, yes. Or liberation. So what, what do, do you want? want? <laughs> I only want to... Babatad bhakta hoi tiki twai. To be you, you servant. The eternal. Uh, after, uh, life uh, after life. Yes, okay. So that's the prayer of the devotee. And to the, to the extent of the sincerity of that prayer and realization, Krishna will reciprocate. You know, there's they, that saying, watch what you pray for. I remember uh, Rajendra Nandana Prabhu was telling us years ago that uh, he had asked Janani Vas in Mayapur to offer some prayers to Lord Nishingadev for his quick advancement in Krishna consciousness. And Janani Vas said, you sure you want me to ask that? Because it could be a real roller coaster. <laughs> Lord Nishingadev will help you with that, maybe faster than you think you want to go. Janani Vas. R R Rajendra Nandan, Rajendra Nandan. Yeah, yeah, when he was in Mayapur one year, he was saying that. And he said, making the point that you, know, you pray like that, he, you may get recipro it may, reciprocation may come from Lord Nishingadev. He's known for, uh, you know, like speeding things up. So do you really want to speed things up? He said, yes. So he went and did some puja for him. So uh, that's that's Krishna. He's He's got his timetable. And... Uh, uh, 31. Anyways, uh, we'll end because we have the uh, Krishna verse about him having a tantrum. But today is Rukmini Dwadasi. Okay? Now I was going to read from the Krishna book and so on, but I'm not going to do that. But I would like to read the 26 qualities of Rukmini Devi. Can I do that? The 26 qualities. Of, well, I'll find out. It's here in the um, uh, Vaishnav calendar app. And a love story, prayers dedicated. It says, Qualities of Rukmini Devi. Uh, I'll read just the English because it sounds good in English. It says, Whose face is charming? Two, shy. Three, exalted of saintly character. Four, possessing intelligence. Five, possessing auspicious bodily markings. Six, magnanimous. Seven, of proper behavior. Eight, an ideal wife. Nine, the divine goddess. Ten, dark-eyed. Uh, Eleven, enchanting. Twelve, aristocratic. Thirteen, sober-minded. Fourteen, of good family. Fifteen, an expert knower of bodily symptoms. Sixteen, having rendered devotional service. Seventeen, dedicated exclusively to Krishna. Eighteen, uh, of flawless beauty. 19, sweetly smiling, 
20 of lovely hips. Okay? Uh, bimba pala adara, glowing bimba red lips. Okay? Okay? Uh, firm breasts. Uh, walking with the motions of a royal swan. Uh, shapely waist, whose mind is stolen away by Krishna. And 26, a repository of all other good qualities. Shri Mati Rukmini Devi Dasi Ki Jai. Rukmini Devi, not Dasi. No, just this listed here. This is quality Rukmini. Okay. So we have time for a, a tantrum. Chant it, then Krishna will have a tantrum. <laughs> this, is a, this is a verse by Bilva Mangatakwa, but it's not in the Karnamata. He wrote a lot of other verses. Nitam nabanama nitam ke netapitam paya kome murali. It is a modir latantam boomam palam namama go palam. Who stole my butter? Who drank my milk? And where can my flute be found? I bow to the coward child who shouts these words as he rolls on the ground. How do you roll? <laughs> so are there any questions on this verse? Anything that was brought up in class? Uh, more um, questions or comments? Your realizations? I was just thinking how in um, other religions, or religious practices, they think that if you have opulence, God favors you. But here, you know, it's the opposite. So I was just kind of comparing and contrasting. Yeah, and it's, it's in, uh, not just in India, too. You know, the prophet said, if Krishna likes you, he'll give you what you want. And if he loves you, he'll take everything away. So just the opposite, like you're saying. One comment, because Prabhupada identified with that, you know, Krishna taking everything away. Yasya hamanu rinnami hadashe taddhananshanai, this famous verse that, that Krishna spoke to Yudhisthira. Uh, in the latter part of the tenth canon, I forget the context, but uh, he says, "For those to those who I show my real mercy, I take everything away." And then the rest of the verse, which I forget exactly the Sanskrit says, "And then the members of their family reject them. Well, we just bum around, you know. He's got nothing. And so then you're, you're bereft, and you have to take shelter of Krishna. So that's uh, now, in my understanding, because I've asked this at different times. Does that mean every single devotee?" their bank account's going to get wiped out and everything's going to be taken away? Or is it as needed? It, oh. So there's no example of a devotee who that didn't happen to, who was very, very dear to the Lord? In other words, well, yeah. Chris should do that if you need it to be done to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Like that. Or just to set a, a wonderful example for others. Yeah, I mean, you've got, you know, the whole aspect of today. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. So it's different depending on the devotee. Like that. <laughs> With nicely oiled hair. Like that. <laughs> Microphone. <laughs> okay, he's a great devotee. Yes. I was just thinking of that, of uh, something Prabhupada said. He said, oh, first Krishna tested me by <laughs> taking everything away, and then Krishna tested me by giving me everything. <laughs> so, I don't, anyways, there's, there's different. Yeah. I mean, the point being is sometimes you meditate on this. If, there, if Krishna is really has all the qualities that they say he has, which means he's omnipresent, omniscient, our dear most friend, then what's really going on? It means it's all on us. Krishna's not lacking. People say, why doesn't God do this? Why does he do that? Why does he help, why does he help me out? Why does he make my job easier? Why does he, all these people are on my case, or you know, whatever it is, all these problems. Uh, why is the Christian just kind of like, but actually he's doing everything he possibly can. We're the ones who are creating the problems, the problem with our, with our, with our life. It's must, it, it, otherwise, Krishna's not the Krishna we hear about in the Bhagavatam. He's not omnipresent. He's not all-loving. He's not you know, all-knowing and all-powerful and so on. 
You know, he's got hang-ups or problems or, you know, whatever. He can't get to us in time, you know. No, but that's not Krishna. If he's there at every single moment, fully conscious of everything eternally, and our dear most friend, the problem must be us. It must be us. And fortunately, he's monitoring everything and doing whatever he can. And in these particular situations, he will uh, accelerate our devotional service, you know. Question or comment? Yeah, I don't know if you mentioned it, and maybe I missed it, but so is there like a case um, that Krishna maybe provides with maybe a good job or maybe a good relationship, and that does he do that to test us, or is it because he knows that maybe we're going to be able to handle it, and maybe that's going to help us in our devotional service? Like, Because I kind of like I always hear that he takes things away from us, but does he actually give us something that could be like, you know, prosperity or something like that? And can that actually help us, or certain devotees, to, I don't know, become better devotees, I guess? Absolutely. I mean, that, that's not only in the purple, but also in the verse. The word used, arrangement. Uh, devotees' material possessions are the arrangement of the Lord, and Krishna will make different arrangements for what we need in our Krishna consciousness. And that varies from devotee to devotee. What does a brahmachari need? iPhone, iPad, da, 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 right? <laughs> Ticket to India every year, car. No, no. Brahmacharis' needs are very, very simple. But a householder, they need some money. They take care of their kids, and you got medical and this and that. So everyone has their own devotional service, or just like say the Varners. Right, the different varnas. If you are an administrator like Maharaj Yudhisthira, you need a lot of money to take care of the kingdom. You need a lot of all kinds of things. So Lord Brahma, he's got to create a whole universe. Krishna had to empower him to do that. What kind of potency is it to create a whole universe? Even to make a, you know, even to get someone to make japatis for the Raj Boga is hard. You know, just to create a few, create a dozen japatis is hard for us. Can you the potency? To create and maintain a whole universe. Where did that come from? It came from Krishna, from within the Lord Brahma's heart. He just gave him that potency. And he's doing it for billions and billions of Brahmas. Because they need that for their service. And where, where's the verse? Is it the end of, uh, there's the end of, I just heard, I was listening to it the other day. I think it's the end of the Brahma Bhimohan Lila. Where Lord Brahma says, and I give you this one universe. You know, in other words, that's his universe, and he, he gives it to Krishna. He says, oh, it's all yours. Yeah, yeah, he makes the point. It's, you know, in other words, he's got a whole universe to use in Krishna's service. A whole universe. What do we got? So the answer is yes. And, but it's always a test. We've got to be careful. Because, uh, because you said in this verse, like we said, it's a, a warning label on material possessions. You've got to be careful. Just like in the very beginning of class, I told you about that magnet about getting married. You gotta be careful. Things can go, you know, it can cause problems, so you have to be careful. But uh, yes, you know, Krishna is very, very kind. He'll give us what we need in our devotional service, but we have to be intelligent to, to see, oh, be careful. Careful what you ask for. It's like Rajendra Nandana Prabhu. <laughs> can you ask Lord Nishingadev to help me make advancement very quickly? You sure you want to ask that? It was a few years ago, years ago, years ago. I made like five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, I remember telling me that story. He was doing, he has to do a special puja to help him advance very quickly in his devotional service. But Janani Vas told him, you sure you want me to offer the puja? Because it's going to happen. It's going to happen. You know. I mean, just like if you prayed, oh, Krishna, take everything away. I just want pure devotional service. And you woke up the next day and everything was gone. So, <laughs> I didn't mean that much. I didn't mean that quickly. Yeah, I didn't mean that. I was just kind of praying, you know. I wasn't really expecting everything to be taken, even my body, right? So, got to be careful. Like that. Yes? You brought up Brahma. Um, you have to show me that thing where he gets one unit, because my, my, I recall that Krishna didn't say a word after all those prayers. He just, he just left. It, it may be another pastime, but yeah. there's some verse, 
Yeah, I'm sure. I'm quoted, sure it is. And he says, yeah, but it, but it would remind me because you know he he got the whole universe. He, you know, to, to, well, that's quite an opulence. But he glorifies the residence of Vrindavan. With this famous verse, a whole bargain, a whole bargain, none the gob of a jowl, some yun mitum, but a man and dumb, pornum, brahma, sanatanum. How greatly fortunate are Nanda Maharaj, the coward men, and all the other inhabitants of Brajabhumi. There's no limit to their good fortune, because the absolute truth, the source of transcendental bliss, the eternal supreme Brahman, has become their friend. Yes. Yeah, Maybe another part of the Bhagavatam, but it just came to He says, I got this universe, one universe, it's yours. It comes to that realization, so I have to find out where that is. Okay, I think we.